The Iroquois, also known as the Five Nations, and later as the Six Nations from 722 onwards, alternatively referred to by the endonym Haudenosaunee, meaning people who are building the longhouse, are an Iroquoian-speaking confederacy of Native Americans and First Nations peoples in Northeast North America. They were known by the French during the colonial years as the Iroquois League and later as the Iroquois Confederacy, while the English simply called them the Five Nations. The peoples of the Iroquois included, from east to west, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca. After 1722, the Iroquoian-speaking Tuscarora people from the southeast were accepted into the Confederacy, from which point it was known as the Six Nations. The Confederacy likely came about between the years 1450 CE and 1660 CE as a result of the Great Law of Peace, said to have been composed by the Daganawida, the Great Peacemaker, Hiawatha, and Jigonsasi, the Mother of Nations. For nearly 200 years, the Six Nations Haudenosaunee Confederacy were a powerful factor in North American colonial policy, with some scholars arguing for the concept of the middle ground in that European powers were used by the Iroquois just as much as Europeans used them. At its peak around 1700, Iroquois power extended from what is today New York State, north into present-day Ontario and Quebec along the lower Great Lakes, upper St. Lawrence, and south on both sides of the Allegheny Mountains into present-day Virginia and Kentucky, and into the Ohio Valley. The St. Lawrence Iroquoians, Wendat, Huron, Erie, and Susquehannock, all independent peoples known to the European colonists, also spoke Iroquoian languages. They are considered Iroquoian in a larger cultural sense, all being descended from the Proto-Iroquoian people and language. Historically, however, they were competitors and enemies of the Iroquois Confederacy nations. In 2010, more than 45,000 enrolled Six Nations people lived in Canada and over 81,000 in the United States. Iroquois Confederacy. The Iroquois Confederacy is believed to have been founded by the great peacemaker at an unknown date estimated between 1450 and 1660, bringing together five distinct nations in the Southern Great Lakes area into the Great League of Peace. Other research, however, suggests the founding occurred in 11432. Each nation within this Iroquoian Confederacy had a distinct language, territory, and function in the League. The League is governed by a Grand Council, an assembly of 50 chiefs or sachems, each representing a clan of a nation. When Europeans first arrived in North America, the Haudenosaunee, Iroquois League to the French, five nations to the British, were based in what is now Central and West New York State, including the Finger Lakes region, occupying large areas north to the St. Lawrence River, east to Montreal and the Hudson River, and south into what is today Northwestern Pennsylvania. At its peak around 1700, Iroquois power extended from what is today New York State, north into present-day Ontario and Quebec along the lower Great Lakes upper St. Lawrence, and south on both sides of the Allegheny Mountains into present-day Virginia and Kentucky and into the Ohio Valley. From east to west, the League was composed of the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca nations. In about 1722, the Iroquoian-speaking Tuscarora joined the League having migrated northwards from the Carolinas after a bloody conflict with white settlers. A shared cultural background with the five nations of the Iroquois and a sponsorship from the Oneida led the Tuscarora to becoming accepted as the sixth nation in the Confederacy in 1722. The Iroquois become known afterwards as the Six Nations. Other independent Iroquoian-speaking peoples, such as the Erie, Susquehannock, Huron, Wendat, and Wyandotte lived at various times along the St. Lawrence River and around the Great Lakes. In the American Southeast, the Cherokee were an Iroquoian language people who had migrated to that area centuries before European contact. None of these were part of the Haudenosaunee League. Those on the borders of Haudenosaunee territory in the Great Lakes region competed and warred with the nations of the League. French, Dutch, and English colonists, both in New France, Canada, and what became the 13 colonies, recognized a need to gain favor with the Iroquois people, who occupied a significant portion of lands west of the colonial settlements. Their first relations were for fur trading, which became highly lucrative for both sides. The colonists also sought to establish friendly relations to secure their settlement borders. 
For nearly 200 years, the Iroquois were a powerful factor in North American colonial policy. Alliance with the Iroquois offered political and strategic advantages to the European powers. But the Iroquois preserved considerable independence. Some of their people settled in mission villages along the St. Lawrence River, becoming more closely tied to the French. While they participated in French-led raids on Dutch and English colonial settlements, where some Mohawk and other Iroquois settled, in general, the Iroquois resisted attacking their own peoples. The Iroquois remained a large politically united Native American polity until the American Revolution, when the League kept its treaty promises to the British Crown. After their defeat, the British ceded Iroquois territory without consultation, and many Iroquois had to abandon their lands in the Mohawk Valley and elsewhere and relocate to the northern lands retained by the British. The Crown gave them land in compensation for the five million acres they had lost in the South, but it was not equivalent to earlier territory. Modern scholars of the Iroquois distinguish between the League and the Confederacy. According to this interpretation, the Iroquois League refers to the ceremonial and cultural institution embodied in the Grand Council, which still exists. The Iroquois Confederacy was a decentralized political and diplomatic entity that emerged in response to European colonization, which was dissolved after the British defeat in the American Revolutionary War. Today's Iroquois slash Six Nations people do not make any such distinction, use the terms interchangeably, but prefer the name Haudenosaunee Confederacy. After the migration of a majority to Canada, the Iroquois remaining in New York were required to live mostly on reservations. In 1784, a total of 6,000 Iroquois faced 240,000 New Yorkers, with land-hungry New Englanders poised to migrate west. Oneidas alone, who were only 600 strong, owned 6 million acres, or about 2.4 million hectares. Iroquois was a land rush waiting to happen. By the War of 1812, the Iroquois had lost control of considerable territory. Historiography, previous research containing the discovery of Iroquois tools and artifacts, suggests that the origin of the Iroquois was in Montreal, Canada, near the St. Lawrence River. After an unsuccessful rebellion, they were driven out of Quebec to New York. Knowledge of Iroquois history stemmed from Haudenosaunee oral tradition, archeological evidence, accounts from Jesuit missionaries, and subsequent European historians. Historian Scott Stevens credits the early modern European value of written sources over oral tradition as contributing to a racialized, prejudiced perspective about the Iroquois through the 19th century. The historiography of the Iroquois peoples is a topic of much debate, especially regarding the American colonial period. French Jesuit accounts of the Iroquois portrayed them as savages lacking government, law, letters, and religion but the Jesuits made considerable effort to study their languages and cultures, and some came to respect them. A source of confusion for European sources coming from a patriarchal society was the matrilineal kinship system of Iroquois society and the related power of women. The Canadian historian D. Peter MacLeod wrote about the Canadian Iroquois and the French in the time of the Seven Years' War. Most critically, the importance of clan mothers, who possessed considerable economic and political power within Canadian Iroquois communities, was blithely overlooked by patriarchal European scribes. Those references that do exist show clan mothers meeting in council with their male counterparts to take decisions regarding war and peace and joining in delegations to confront the Onontio, the Iroquois term for the French governor general, and the French leadership in Montreal, but only hint at the real influence wielded by these women. 18th century English historiography focuses on the diplomatic relations with the Iroquois, supplemented by such images as John Verrill's Four Mohawk Kings, and publications such as the Anglo-Iroquoian Treaty Proceedings printed by Benjamin Franklin. A persistent 19th and 20th century narrative casts the Iroquois as an expansive military and political power, subjugated their enemies by violent force, and for almost two centuries acted as the fulcrum in the balance of power in colonial North America. Historian Scott Stevens noted that the Iroquois themselves began to influence the writing of their history in the 19th century, including Joseph Brandt, Mohawk, and David Cusick, Tuscarora, C. 1781-1840. John Arthur Gibson, Seneca, 
1850-1912 was an important figure of his generation in recounting versions of Iroquois history in epics on the Peacemaker. Notable women historians among the Iroquois emerged in the following decades, including Laura Minnie Kellogg, Oneida, 1880-1949, and Alice Lee Jemison, Seneca, 1901-1964. The Iroquois League was established prior to European contact with the banding together of five of the many Iroquoian peoples who had emerged south of the Great Lakes. Many archaeologists and anthropologists believe that the League was formed about 1450, though arguments have been made for an earlier date. One theory argues that the League formed shortly after a solar eclipse on August 31, 1142, an event thought to be expressed in oral tradition about the League's origins. Some sources link an early origin of the Iroquois Confederacy to the adoption of corn as a staple crop. Anthropologist Dean Snow argues that the archaeological evidence does not support a date earlier than 1450. He has said that recent claims for a much earlier date may be for contemporary political purposes. Other scholars note that anthropological researchers consulted only male informants, thus losing the half of the historical story told in the distinct oral traditions of women. For this reason, origin tales tend to emphasize the two men, Deganawida and Hiawatha, while the woman, Jigun Sasi, who plays a prominent role in the female tradition, remains largely unknown. The founders of League are traditionally held to be Dekanawada, the great peacemaker, Hiawatha, and Jigon Sasi, the mother of nations, whose home acted as a sort of United Nations. They brought the peacemaker's great law of peace to the squabbling Iroquoian nations who were fighting, raiding, and feuding with each other and with other tribes, both Algonquian and Iroquoian. Five nations originally joined in the League, giving rise to the many historic references to five nations of the Iroquois. With the addition of the southern Tuscarora in the 18th century, these original five tribes still compose the Haudenosaunee in the early 21st century, the Mohawk, Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, and Seneca. According to legend, an evil Onondaga chieftain named Tadotaho was the last converted to the ways of peace by the great peacemaker in Hiawatha. He was offered the position as the titular chair of the League's council, representing the unity of all nations of the League. This is said to have occurred at Onondaga Lake near present-day Syracuse, New York. The title Tadodaho is still used for the League's chair, the 50th chief who sits with the Onondaga in council. The Iroquois subsequently created a highly egalitarian society. One British colonial administrator declared in 1749 that the Iroquois had such absolute notions of liberty that they allow no kind of superiority of one over another and banish all servitude from their territories. As raids between the member tribes ended and they directed warfare against competitors, the Iroquois increased in numbers while their rivals declined. The political cohesion of the Iroquois rapidly became one of the strongest forces in 17th and 18th century Northeastern North America. The League's Council of 50 ruled on disputes and sought consensus. However, the Confederacy did not speak for all five tribes, which continued to act independently and form their own war bands. Around 1678, the Council began to exert more power in negotiations with the colonial governments of Pennsylvania and New York, and the Iroquois became very adroit at diplomacy, playing off the French against the British as individual tribes had earlier played the Swedes, Dutch, and English. Iroquoian language peoples were involved in warfare and trading with nearby members of the Iroquois League. The explorer Robert LaSalle in the 17th century identified the Mosopelea as among the Ohio Valley peoples defeated by the Iroquois in the early 1670s. The Erian peoples of the upper Allegheny Valley declined earlier during the Beaver Wars. By 1676, the power of the Susquehannock was broken from the effects of three years of epidemic disease, war with the Iroquois, and frontier battles as settlers took advantage of the weakened tribe. According to one theory of early Iroquois history, after becoming united in the League, the Iroquois invaded the Ohio River Valley in the territories that would become the Eastern Ohio country down as far as present-day Kentucky to seek additional hunting grounds. They displaced about 1,200 Siouan-speaking tribe people of the Ohio River Valley, such as the Quapau, Akansia, Ofo, Mosopelea, and Tutelo and other closely related tribes out of the region. 
These tribes migrated to regions around the Mississippi River and the Piedmont regions of the East Coast. Other Iroquoian language peoples, including the populous Wyandot, Huron, with related social organization and cultures, became extinct as tribes as a result of disease and war. They did not join the League when invited and were much reduced after the Beaver Wars and high mortality from Eurasian infectious diseases. While the indigenous nations sometimes tried to remain neutral in the various colonial frontier wars, some also allied with Europeans as in the French and Indian War, the North American front of the Seven Years' War. The six nations were split in their alliances between the French and British in that war, the North American front of the Seven Years' War. The six nations were split in their alliances between the French and British in that war, 